So here is the three piece um uh, blazer and the shorts on my client. She just came. I'm yet to iron it and to hold down the neckline, the lapel. But please don't mind that revealing so much. She just lost it. So this is her on her shoot day. That's her photo shoot day. Though she's angry that the photographer didn't really do much work. But this is the outcome of the dress. And yeah, it came out hello guys welcome back to my channel my name is Kuli. um hope you guys are doing good so today we'll be learning how to make this blazer dress it's a three-piece the trouser it has a short and the trouser with the jacket the trouser is just net it's a see-through net then the uh, inner short is a uh, it's just a short a sequence short so let's just get started and see how i couldn't make um a good video because they i was already in a hurry i was already rushing it because there was no time she came to pick it up but i managed to get a little um video for of the dress so let's just get started here are about three years of um three years two years of nets that is the net that i used then sequence is two two and a half to three years of sequence that was what I used. I used sequence for the front and the short. So the next thing is to get I got I use text one for her jacket length. You can use more. Then I brought out four inches. The line that I'm taking on is four inches for her lapel. You can bring two inches, one inches or more. It depends on how wide you want your lapel to be and how you want it to overlap on each other the next thing is to get your shoulder measurement that is your shoulder the width of your shoulder your shoulder divided divided by two you get it then go down by one inch just our normal shirt pattern um, you go down by one inch then get your chest line i use her chest line um 8.5 for her chest line then you extend the line you extend her chest line because you'll be needing it you just extend it the way you you'll be able to use it so the next thing i measured her uh her shoulder again just to get um a straight line that's the 8.5 i had to extend the 8.5 line again just to get um a straight line so after that you non divide your armhole your arm the your chest line to get the middle point of that so the next thing is to get your waistline i use 16 as her waistline normally women for women had the our waistline is um 16 or if the person is taller you can use maybe 17 to 18 so i use 16 as her waistline you get your waistline then the down part is your hip you don't have to you get it again for her neckline i use three inches for her neck width then three point three inches for her for the front width then one inch for the back width and that was what i used then i drew the line then the back line though so we are going to draft out the back separately but i just have to do it here and that was the line so i connected my shoulder slope the one inch the one inch that you went down with you just connect it to your neckline then you divide the mid of your arm or you get them the mid of your armhole you go for the front armhole you go in by half inch just the normal way we draft our pattern our borders for the for this so this this now you determine uh i measured my round box that's the ball circumference which is uh 42 divided by four i got 10.5 then i i measured her waist measurement here we don't need you don't really need your underboss ah, i didn't use your, my underboss just the waistline so you uh, at the damp part the that part of the jacket you get your hip measurement your hip divided by four so i got it then i connected the lines sorry that it wasn't that visible because the marker stopped working so i had to use pen being that this is a um a, uh, a pattern paper also it wasn't visible enough so i got her measurement then i added one one inch 
I added one or two two inches allowance because it's a free something. I don't want it to be super tight on her. She wouldn't like it to be really, really tight on her. So that was her hip and her waist. I was just her allowance, then her main um, measurement. So I connected everything. The next thing is to here you'll be working with your boss point measurement. That is your nipple to nipple, your boss point to boss point. So her boss point, so I don't really have her measurement, like her exact measurement, her boss point. And I don't have her boss point measurement, but I just have to assume I used like eight for her boss point. So I used eight, then I added one and a half inch, making it, um, Eight divided by two is four inches. Then I added one inch. That is four point five inch uh, inches for her bust point. So you get her bust point from her hip up to her chest line. You mark four point five. Sorry, this wasn't visible enough. You mark four point five. So you are going to take the uh, 4.5 all the way to her chest line then at her chest line you go down by 1.5 inches then her on her hip you come up by 1.5 uh, 2 inches at her waist the waist you go in by half inch then you go in go out by half inch then you connect it to that 1.5 line then down to that two inches line sorry this is not visible i'm so so sorry i'll still have i still have a, another tutorial on how to make a blazer uh so that was it so you just connect your dad this that you that is your dad's line you just connect your dad so you now determine how you want this to be if you want it to be a princess that or a shoulder that i use shoulder that so you measure your shoulder what after your neck with you measure what you have on your shoulder and divide it by two you measure the total line and divide it by two then connect it to meet that your dots whatever you have your total number after getting your neck with whatever you have from your neck width to your shoulder to the end of your shoulder whatever you have there you con you divide it by two so this is straight that i made another video i have another one where i made i made with a straight that uh sorry a princess that so here i used a straight that and yeah this is it just whatever you have whatever number you have you divide it by two so now to work on the lapel you now determine your your breaking points that is where you want your uh, color your lapel to stop um from your waist you can go up by two inches but on your waist it can go up by two inches but i had to stop her breaking point at her waist she really likes to expose her body and all that so it just so just get her uh chest sorry her breaking point so from the width of your neckline that is the the width your neck width you connect with a straight line to go and meet your breaking point that is at your waist or where you went up by two inches or so so the next thing after that that is your breaking point just connect with a straight line sorry that this is not showing so the next thing is to determine your front neckline that is the lapel part of your front neckline so i extended mine from the neck from the depth of the neck i extended it again by four inches that is for the front lapel the neckline the uh, front neckline so i send it by, by four inches then after that you by four inches so after that uh, that you connect the neckline so the width of the neck front neckline i extended it just to get my front lapel so after that you take it down with maybe a cuff to measure your back neckline well, i have four so i'll just extend from this line that you went you went down with by a quarter of an inch. This line, my friend, the truck is giving me big man. So you go up here by four inches, and this is what I have here. So at this four inches, you still go out again a little. You still go out a little again. Then connect it to this line, just a little. So when I'm cutting it, I know I've cut it, but this line is much. My truck, I told you that my truck is giving me bold mark. So from that line you now measure how wide you want your collar to be i think i'll be using four inches for her 
color whitening for the whiteness of her color you can reduce it if it's much so i will use pen and mark what it is from this please don't take from this line take from this line this is your new neckline so i will determine how white i want the color to be i'll take four inches as a color whitening then i'll connect it around here from this from here i will now connect look at the way i'm placing my ruler look at the way i'm placing the ruler Where I'm placing it. Remember that I have four inches. If it's two, if it's two, sorry, if it's two, if it's too wide, I'll reduce it. So from this place again. So I have four inches. Then from this notches, from this place, this is my three inches. I will now determine the back color, how wide I want the back color. So here is 4.5. Here is 4.5. I'm going to make the back color. The notches, like the notches, you're not determining the notches where you want your notches to start from. If you want it down or you want it up, or you just use this middle, then you just I mean, so I'm just going to use from this middle, I'm going to mark three inches or two points, two points, not two point seven, two point seven, two point seven point five, two seven point five. Oh, that is how I'll so. So I'll get my two point seven, two point seventy five, then I'll connect from this place, I'll connect it this way. Connect this way. Remember that this is our line. This is not the line. If you check the picture, you'll notice that the front collar, the front lapel is longer than this. It's longer than this one. So I just connect this slant line with this slant line. I'm sorry that my my this thing is showing me different different things. So I'll connect from this point, I'll connect this one also. So I'll connect it this way with a slant curve. If you feel if yours is too wide, if you feel that it's too wide, you can reduce it. So I, I feel like I'm still going to reduce my I'm still going to reduce it. Let me use 3.5. So from here, I'll place my tape and get 3.5. Instead of 4 inches, I feel that 4 inches is too wide. So from this place now, remember that I have, from here, I have 4.5. So from here, I have 3 inches. Two, let me use 2.5 because the back is shorter. Back is shorter. So I use 2.5 inches. Then I'll connect it this way. So here. Remember that this place is with a slant line. So this is the new line. Our new line. I use 2.5 inches here, then I use 3.5 inches the width. So this is it. I know these lines are not showing you very well, but when I'm cutting it, I will show you how to cut it. Connect it to the breaking point. So this line connect to this and from here to this. From here to the breaking point in the shoulder slope. This line, I'm not using it. I'm not using it. So this is what we have. And I still feel that this lapel I still need to extend because my client Awala is much. Awala is much. So this is what I have and this is what I have. So I'm just going to fold it and use it to drag out the back. I use it to cut out the back before. Sorry, uh, the the damn part is you still have to determine how wide you want yours to to be. The that is the lapel part, the damn part. How wide you want it to be? You can still leave that four inches or you minus some inches. So I ended up using three inches, three inches. I ended up instead of that four inches or three point five inches to that four inches. You can just leave it once you just connect your lapel. Just leave the remaining one and that is just your lapel don't mind those lines that i'm connecting just connect your lapel to meet and that is just it Okay, remember that we cut out the back. 
be straight. I'm not going to cover anything. I'm not going to cover the damn part. It's just be straight. So I will not be so good. So you join this thing. The next thing is to cut this part. The shoulder sleeve. Then the ankle. I'm just going to cut the front ankle. Straight. So you can't do it. I'm not going to cut anything. So that's all. Look at this. So take the side. So this is the back, this is the back corner, so that this is the part that you are to the back. So I feel the, the space is a little bit much, so I'm just going to cut this way. Cut around. You are going to cut all this, the one that you attach to this place. You are going to do the one you attach to this. Here is what you are going to attach to the neck. So you cut two of this. This is going to be two pieces. Two of this. So I am going to show that one. So, so if you think that this is too pointy, you can cover it for me too. I am just going to do the little cut to this. So this we are cutting the parts of this part. This part is of no use. This is the part. I'm trying to cut it. So this is the part of the tension here. This is the tension here. They can not use not the line for this one. So this is how they are going to cut. This is how they are going to cut. So this is how they are going to cut. This way. So this way. This is going to be the last. Huh? Yeah, this is this. If you don't, if you don't want to open it, I'll just leave it open if you want to close the time and do this. So I'm going to do this with a little cough. A little cough. I'm just covering this one guys. So I'm going to not this place. I need to know that this. So I need to know that it's my breaking point. So I'm not going to do it. So you can also not this in the past if you want. I'm going to not it also. So this is it. So I'll repel the laptop. So this is it. So please, you know that if you're cutting on the fabric, it should be on foam. It should be on foam. So I'll cut it on. Uh, you have two pieces of this and two of this. Then the back, let's just cut the back. Let's just cut the back. Let's have it like this to give enough of the back. So I'm trying to go in and this is the same. Just leave it aside and I'll do the cutting. So I have wrapped it at the back already. Just the same thing. Does the same make all the only difference is that you will not be adding lapel and you will not be adding any space, any zipper allowance space. So this is it. I added one inch allowance, but there's no space again. So I'm still going to add one inch allowance on, when I'm cutting it on the fabric. So for the for the dart for, for the pack, for the back of the dart, so the waist of the dart to the, the back to realize very well, I'm going to minus half inch. Uh, so I'll come down to the waist. Here is the waistline. Just you know the normal way we drop it down to the front. Here at the waistline, I'm going to go in by one inch. Then I'll connect this way. Just I'll place by one inch this way. I'll connect it to, to this part. I'll just connect it slightly to the chest line. Then I'll still con connect to that line to the hip line. To the same slant to the hip line. So this way. This way, this way. So this thing I did now will help it to lap very well at the back. Just to give it a good fitting. So I'll just trim it out. Trim it out. Trim, 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 trim. So, so we're cutting i'm done we, we are done drafting out the jacket part so we'll be now be cutting the shawl so you get your starting line then your short um the length of your short the length of her short is 15, uh, 14 then i use one inch for her um hemming allowance that is for the folding allowance so i got 14 then i extended the lines the the hemming line and all that so here i didn't um uh, i didn't add elastic to the um sorry a band to the
to the shirt i didn't remove any band you know normally when you're making a shirt or a pant you remove your band band allowance here yeah, i didn't reduce any band band allowance i just use i got her on um, her hip location i used 9.5 inches for her hip location without my minusing any band if you want to add band to yours you can minus it so the next is to get her crouch her crouch line you know we do it when you're making a trouser palazzo you get your hip then you add one inch again but here i got her hip i just added uh her hip um her hip divided by four then you add one inch here i didn't add any one inch i just used her hip measurement then the next thing is to get her hip circumference i got her hip circumference then added one inch for the allowance then i took it up to the uh, waistline so from there you determine your crouch extension that is your hip again that's 44 how hip is 44 that is 11 divided by by four whatever you have that will be your that will be your crotch extension your hip your hip divided by four whatever you have then you divide whatever you you got by four again then you just do a slant curve for the crouch the next thing is to determine measure the total from your crotch extension measure, measure the total amount you have then divide it by two here you know if you are making a palazzo trouser for the crouch for her time measurement you go down by three inches from the, her crouch please see my video on how to make a uh, palazzo trousers for you to understand here i didn't go down by three inches i just took her measurement her uh, tie measurement right on her on her crouch line i didn't go down by three inches you know this is short a bump short is very short so there's no point going down by three inches just take your measurements your lap me uh, your tie measurements at her crouch line so whatever you have your tie divided by two plus one inch i added one inch or half inch so in allowance whatever you get then divide that your crotch the, your total crotch line for you to place your tie measurement so i divided then place my tie measurement please see i'll still make a personal video because this video is becoming too long already i'll still make a video on how to make a perfect shot and this shot came as perfect she really loved it so at her waistline you take your waist measurement then i added one inch there there is no that and all that so i connected it down to her hip then from her hip to her crowd from her crowd to her thigh measurement and that was it. then i con i also connected the crouch line this was so easy like the easiest shot that i've ever made and normally i've never used this pattern that i'm using before like this measurement but this came out really fine really beautiful which i'm still going to make a tutorial on how you can make this perfectly once your measurements are correct you just connect it down to the hemming point it's this is a really short it's short 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 so that uh, this is what i have i'm done with it i didn't give any waistline i don't slant my front uh, my front you can slant yours yes you can slant it so i said it like let me use nine inches which i later said no that 9.5 inches as i keep location came out really fine and the crouch and everything was matching and uh, all that so this is it for the front now we'll just drop to uh the back Cutting out the, I've been trying to place the fabric so that I'll be able to cut out the back wall. This thing is not enough. I got two, two, one and a half yards of sequence for this. So I'm still, I'm just trying to manage it very well. Because I don't want to start coming out to five feet. So I'll, at the crouch line, I'll come down by half inch for the feet so that I can fit very well. Here I'm going to extend by, let me check the amount by half feet. So I'll extend the crouch by two, 1.5 or 1.7. I'll extend the crouch by 1.5 or 1.7. Let me just continue the thing so that I can shift it because it's not allowance.
I will extend it by 1.5 to it's not uh, uh, by 1.75. I send it by 1.75. So here I'll go in by 1.5 also. I'll go in by 1.5. Then I'll go up by 1.5 too. I'll go up by 1.5 here. So I'll waste my, I'll replace that 1.5. I'll replace it at the heat line. Uh, if you have enough fabric, go out by 1.5 also. But it's not enough. So I'll go out by 1 inch. So at the, at the craft line, go out by 1 inch also. So from here, I'll connect with a slant curve to go and make this 1.5. Then I'll do my pouch. I'll connect this pouch line so to have a side zipper. Then I'll just connect straight from here. I'll connect it. I'll just make it on this way. Just connect it the way to fit. So I don't have up to 1.5 inches. I'll just, whatever I have here, that is how I'm going to connect it. This line, I'm just going to go. So this, at this damper, you go out by half inch. Just by half inch, so you just connect everything, and that is it for the back. So I'll just cut it. You know that I'm not going to cut because this is showing very well. And wait here, this crash part you come in by 1.5. Here you replace that 1.5, then you go up by 1.5 to 2 inches. Depend it depends on how wide your butt is. So I went up by 1.5, you can go by 2 inches, then I send it to 2 inches. No problem. So here. I went up by half inch here, 1.5 is still if at the heat side, 1.5 if you have enough space. But I don't have enough space for 1.5, so I'm just using whatever space I have here. At the crouch, 1 inch. So whatever space I have here, that's what I'm using. I'm just managing This is for the back. Well, I'm done joining the both sides, the dart um, and the shoulder. So, you will join your shoulder. Sorry that I did this off my but you don't join your shoulder. Okay, now walk inside, you man. Stop walking. You just bring the shoulder. You just bring both darts. Join it straight. Remember that you cut this. You have to piece of this. You join straight this way. Then you, you join I the other one. You also join the the other side of the dart. You also join the other side of the dart. Then after joining it, you do the same thing with the back. You join the uh, back dart. You join also the back dart. Then you join the back neckline like the heart slit. You join it also together. Then you join both shoulders. Make sure those darts are matching very well. You join the shoulder. You join the shoulder. Then, then you join the sides, like the side seam. I joined it. Remember that I left two inches seam allowance. But well, I use half inch to join it both because I don't want it to be fitted on half. So this is the outcome of what we I'm yet to join the collar though. So you just have to join it this way. Then the next thing we are cutting the sleeve. So I'm just going to measure what I have here. I'm going to measure around what I have. I have 12.5, so I'm just going to cut out 12.5. I have on fold I'll measure 12.5. That is I have 24 to 25. So you from here I'll determine the sleeve length. I never see this. I'll determine the sleeve length. So I have 24 here. That's what I'm going to use. I have 24, so I'll just use the 24. There, the, though there are some holes, which I'm going to look for the way to close. So from here, I'll come down by 4 inches. Come down by 4 inches. Then I'll draw a slant line this way. To make that point too. So I'll measure it to get 12 inches, 12.5 to 13 inches. So I have, I'll use 13 inches. I'll just take it down, the wideness and everything is 11. Here is 11. Just free from there. So I'll just take it down this way. Not a straight white sleeve. So this is what I have here. And this is what I'm going to be using. So I'll cut it out and cut the other sleeve. Then we'll attach it. The, so this is the collar. You have to cut on fold, but if you don't have enough fabric, you cut two pieces of this and join it here. So I'm, I'm still trying to manage this fabric. It's not enough. Not even. 
Because I have the two, this is the color and this will be the pacing. So you just stitch it the way you stitch this part. Also just hold it down like that and hold it and then open it up. The curvy part is what you are going to attach to the neck. So this is the part that you attach to your neck. You stitch this blade and then the part, this side will face will be the this side will go to the north part, that is the lapel part. I'm just trying to control you. This is the center point. This place is the center point. This is the part that will go to the neck. You attach to your, your shirt. So you, you sew this place. You sew it this way. Close to this place. Then open it up here. I'll do it and bring it up for you to see. I'll do it. So I will now look for the pan. Remember, we move two inches for the pan. I'm going to cut out a pan of 2.5. Here, I wanted to use the sequence pattern. So for the facing, for the facing, just have to, if you have enough fabric, to cut exactly, just from this, from the center point, you go in by two inches, you can cut exactly something like this for the facing. I'm only going to face the front, I'm not facing for the back. So, you cut out something like this, is because, where it's like this now, is because the fabric is not enough, it will not be enough. So I'm just going to drink something to reach, maybe I'm just drawing the single pivot to reach, to make it, to just to cover the front, the part that will show very well. So this is what I have. So this is what I have for the front. So I'll print this part very well. For the front of the lapel. So I'll get something again to join to get to the down part. So maybe I'll use one of this. But I'll use this as the bangle. Let me join it. So check it is the same. The same, the width is matching very well. So I cut you. So this is what I have. This is what I'm going to do. So I'll cut it. I'll attach it to this one. So this part will go to the front. Ooh. And it's not as I did. So after turning the lining, please, is the coffee part that you attach to the neck of your shirt. Sorry, I'm using a different, um, uh, this thing for the, a different, a different fabric for, just to illustrate this for you. Get what I'm saying, just to show you how to attach the collar to the dress, the lapel collar to the, um, jacket. So this is it. Just get everything after joining your your fabric, your jacket, and everything. After joining the dust and everything, you bring the center, the center. You bring the center of your your collar, then match it to the center back. The center back should match the center back. Pin. You join this place. So the next thing is to. Take this place. Remember that your center front, that place you notch, that your lapel center front, this place, that's why I said you should notch it. Then you place it this way. You place this notch, this part here. Then you hold it. Then you sew, sew up to this place. Then you do the same thing. Then you join it here again. So I'll join it and I'll show you the outcome. I'll come join it now. I'll join it. You'll do it before you add the line. 